Uh, Madam Secretary, just, just real, real quick on this question. The President's budget, I think, assumes 4.3% uh, inflation through calendar year 2023. Number one, can you confirm that or give me a, a, an accurate number if I'm wrong? And then just describe for me how do we do that? Uh, particularly in light of what's happened with SVB and what I think we will continue to see monetary policy that's going to increase uh, incrementally until we get inflation under control. That creates other stressors for the banking community. But is it 4.3 percent? And did do you, you agree with that assumption? Did you say inflation? Yeah, inflation. For, for calendar 2023. 2023. We assume that inflation would run at 3 percent. At 3 percent. And, and we're in the, uh, the tail end of March. Um, so you still believe, given the inflation estimates we got, that that's still a valid assumption? It is coming down on a 12-month basis. And yeah. OK, um, if, if we could just get to the committee the, uh, the analysis that went into that, I think it'd be helpful. Um, I, I want to go back to uh, Senator Warren's question or comments very quickly. Back in 2017, I think you were quoted before the, G, uh, the uh, Joint Economic Committee with respect to Senate Bill 2155 that the Fed would still be able to impose enhanced prudential standards on firms if necessary and that the bill is a move in the right direction that would be a good enabling for the Fed to appropriately tailor its supervision. Do you still stand by that statement? I, th I think the tail, t I, yep. I didn't, I, I said that I thought tailing, okay. tailoring is appropriate, and I still believe that. And okay. I think the Fed Thank um, you. continues to have. I guess the question that I have, because I don't, I don't agree with uh, Senator Warren's the, the premise of her questions. It seems to me, unless we, oh, and I should say that in that same time frame, uh, Mr. Torello was responsible for implementing a bill that he publicly criticized, Senate Bill 2155. He he did not like the bill. Um, he's over there helping implement it. And yesterday, when wasn't wasn't it passed in 2018? He let he left. That, no, no, no. I'm sorry. When you were implementing Dodd Frank, I'm sorry. sorry. So when you were implementing Dodd Frank, Torello was in play. Then we passed Senate Bill 2155. He was highly critical of it. However, he said as late as yesterday, he doesn't believe that Senate Bill 2155 had anything to do with what occurred at Silicon Valley Bank, um, and that his suspicion was that it was supervisory, uh, uh, maybe supervisors not being aggressive and potentially using some of the discretionary regulatory regimens that were allowed in Senate Bill 2155 if you happen to have a specific bank that had activities where you should increase um, increase the level of supervision. Um, so it seems to me that here we're using 2155 as a red herring for something that I believe fundamentally is going to be a supervisory or regulatory lapse. I want to ask you a question about OECD in my time remaining, and I do want to get close to five minutes. Um, the baseline agreement doesn't have what I consider to be the most basic standards for dispute resolution, um, but it looks as if we still want to move forward with congressional action absent that. Um, I also have some concerns with uh, the exemptions that uh, are in uh, the agreement, particularly with respect to China. And I'm grossly uh, summarizing my context to give you a chance to, uh, to respond. But let me tell you, even beyond the exceptions uh, that benefits China and uh, state-owned enterprises, uh, this committee, nor the Committee on Taxation, has received the data and, and analysis that you all used as a basis for negotiating the deal. Can I just simply get a commitment that the Joint Committee on Taxation and that this committee will get that data and analysis as a part of our future consideration? Uh, for the provision that has to come before Congress? I'm sorry, I'm not sure if you're talking about Pillar 2 or Pillar 1. Um, I think it's all of the above to the extent that well, they're both in the agreement. Well, I think the analysis on Pillar 2 has been done. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the Joint Committee on Taxation has looked at that, and we've, we've 
provided estimates as well that are use standard methods and can discuss we'll that a, with you. Uh, we'll, Pillar one. We'll submit a question had, for the record. My time has expired. We'll submit a question for the record I, uh, to fully describe exactly what we're looking for. And to the extent that it's possessed by some members, then I'll stipulate that I was wrong. But I'm going in with a little bit of a skeptical uh, position. Thank you. I, I thank my colleague for his courtesy. And we'll have the staff, the finance staff, share what we have on Pillar one and Pillar two with my colleague. Senator Blackburn is next.